Hello everybody and welcome to Breaking Illusions with Truth. My name is Lori Anderson. I am a writer for FreedomOutPost.com and I am a journalist for truth. My goal here is to expose lies, dispel the propaganda of the mainstream media, and to help keep you, the listener, informed and up to date on real news. I look forward to interacting with some of the best and brightest people across this nation, and that is the American people. Tonight I'm going to have the privilege of having ex-police chief Shane Harger as a guest who he himself found that he was a target of TSA corruption in January of 2014. He is going to be discussing with us the Bundy standoff as he was there on the front lines on April the 12th of 2014, the day of the standoff. I have also got the privilege to have the assistant campaign manager for two different campaigns. That would be for the Nevada Governor 2014, David Lori Vanderbeek campaign, as well as the 2014 run for sheriff in Clark County, Nevada for Gordon Martinez. His name is David Pruitt. It is very nice to be able to have individuals who not only stand for freedom and liberty, but stand for what is right and for their oath. I look forward to tonight's interview as well as sharing it with you and letting you know exactly where they stand. Thank you and I hope you enjoy these interviews. Well, welcome to the show, Shane, and we are so glad and happy to have you. Um, and, and how have you been doing? And can you let us know, uh, since you were there with boots on the ground at the Bundy Ranch, exactly, you know, what was it that you saw? Well, uh, thanks for having me on the show, uh, Lori. I appreciate it. It's always a pleasure oh, uh, dealing with, with you know, journalists that are freedom fighters, unlike those that are twisting uh, the truth to their own destruction, uh, like the New York Times and so forth. But just to answer your question, I haven't been there on the ground. I can tell you that, yes, there, there was uh, many, many U.S. citizens there that were heavily armed uh, in the defense of the Bundys. And that having been said, the majority of the people that were protesting uh, uh, just near the interstate where BLM, uh, Bureau of Land Management, was pointing assault rifles at the, the citizens threatening to kill them, uh, those protesters were unarmed. These people were holding nothing but American flags and signs uh, expressing their solidarity for our freedoms, the U.S. Constitution. The, the media, the, the mainstream media has not been putting that, that out there. They, they, they put a spin on this mm -hmm. in an attempt to make this look like a bunch of right-wing, skinhead, racist, militia that are out there uh, you know, assaulting uh, federal agents that are in the course of their, of their duties. So would you say, in your opinion, that really what caused the militia and caused the armed people to come in defense of the Bundys was because BLM initially was the one who initiated the violence by, by putting uh, unarmed citizens in their scopes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the Bureau of Land Management was acting outside the scope of their duties, outside the color of law, uh, whenever they uh, were tasing U.S. citizens that were unarmed, uh, sticking attack dogs on U.S. citizens that were unarmed on public land, and uh, body slamming you know, cancer, female cancer victims. The, those things were totally and completely unacceptable setting up these, these pig pens and calling them First Amendment zones, that is what sparked this. That's what caused, literally, over a thousand U.S. citizens to come running uh, to the aid of the Bundy family. Uh, basically, everyone saw what was, was transpiring. The video doesn't lie. Uh, and anyone that can, you know, has a television or a computer screen and, and uh, two eyes could see clearly what was transpiring. Uh, there's no way to fake that. And, setting up these, these First Amendment zones, that's what uh, really caused me to head that way. I said, you know, enough is enough. The First Amendment is not a zone. You know, I dare you to force me into a, a, a pen that says First Amendment. Tell me that's the only place 
said, I, I can express my opinion, and I beg to differ with you. And so that's what got me to help me. Right. And, what, and, and just so that um, my listeners know, you have over 15 years of law enforcement experience yourself. Is that correct? That's correct. As a law enforcement officer, we're sworn we take an oath. Uh, we, we're sworn to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign or domestic. And certainly, in the case of the Bundy family, they were their civil rights were, were being trampled by the Bureau of Land Management, court order or not. Uh, you know, the, the piece of paper that was handed down by whatever federal judge, uh, you, you cannot violate the Constitution and call it law. It is. It is not law. It is pretended legislation. So it's really, in essence, it's not worth the piece of paper it's written on. Right, exactly. And, and you know, I'm so glad to hear you say that. I myself did some research um, on the Nevada laws, and I found it extremely interesting, some of the things that I found. Um, there's actually codes in Nevada law that, that shows that the BLM was actually acting illegally and were subject to arrest, as well as the police officers that were there, like Sheriff Gillespie, who didn't protect the people, were in violation of Nevada law. And as well in Nevada law, it also states that even if a person owes money, that they that you cannot take and collect their cattle or whatever the case may be, that cannot be an excuse for um, taking their cattle or their livestock. It's, it's considered grand larceny in the state of Nevada. Um, so, well, you're absolutely correct, Lori. You're absolutely correct. In, in other words, if, if, I, if I made a loan to, to a rancher, just for example, in, in the state of Nevada, a uh, rancher comes to me and says, hey, I need $25,000. I say, sure, I'm alone $25,000, you got to pay them back in 30 days. Mm -hmm. 30 days rolls around, they haven't made the first payment. I take them to court, the judge says, hey, here's a judgment, they owe you, you know, the $25,000 plus interest. I cannot go to their ranch, take a baseball bat, start smashing the headlights on his truck, right. start confiscating his cows uh, and killing his dog uh, as payment. I can't do that. that, that that's against the law. I would go to prison for that. In essence, that is exactly what the Bureau of Land Management did. Mm -hmm. They had a court document that said, hey, um, you're, you need to stop grazing your, your cows on this particular piece of property. So the Bureau of Land Management, <coughs> their, their remedy for that in their mind was, let's point assault rifles at unarmed American citizens, let's body slam cancer victims, and let's kill cattle, literally. Just kill them and put them in mass graves. Right, and, and you know, this is one of the things that really um, gets to me, and I will, I'd like to pull um, the assistant campaign manager for um, the Nevada, uh, the the candidate that's running for Nevada governor, which would be Dav David Laurie Vanderbeek campaign, as well as um, Gordon Martinez, who is running for sheriff 2014 of the same exact county, as a matter of fact, as to where the Bundy Ranch situation came in. And his name is David Pruitt. David, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I mean, I wish that this whole uh, this whole ordeal could have been averted, you know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. Um, I do know that uh, David Laurie Vanderbeek, as well as Gordon, both, have been taking a stand on the side of the Bundys. Um, and I know that they have been very vocal about the illegal actions of the BLM. Um, do you have any up-to-date information as to anything new about um, what they're planning or, or just more of what a stance so that you can let the listeners know on what stance that they really stand on? Well, I, I know that conversations have happened between uh, both Gordon Martinez um, and the Bundys and also David Vanderbeek and the Bundys. And, of course, those I can't discuss those conversations. Right. I mean, if David Vanderbeek or Calvin want to come out and talk about them, they can. But I can tell you that um, Gordon did talk um, to Mr. Bundy about uh, filing federal lawsuits against the BLM. Good. And uh, also how to go about that, how he needs to set up his case. Um, I know that they talked about good lawyers in the area. Um, I know 
know that they were talking about a lot of things like that. And I know that Mr. Bundy was extremely appreciative, and I know that they had uh, just recently an over an hour conversation um, about that, um, about their pursuing this in court. And uh, I know that they have a very strong case, and I know Gordon's got um, 39 years in law enforcement. He said that they have a very strong case. Um, and it just, um, Gordon, I, I know that both Gordon and David are extremely disgusted with what's happening, uh, what, what <coughs> has happened down there, what's still happening. I mean, right. the buddies are, they're, uh, I, I'm sure that they've gotten many death threats from, from a lot of people. I'm, I'm sure of that, because that happens to, to people who stand for what's right over who's right. Right. And uh, I'm also sure that their, their lives are forever changed because of this corruption, because of um, this infringement on their God-given rights. And these aren't even constitutional rights. The Constitution did not give you rights, did not grant you these rights. These rights were merely acknowledged by the Constitution. And it seems that our government thinks that they can do whatever they want, and I think the people have just had enough, and that's why they're voting more constitutional sheriffs, police officers. That's why they're getting more constitutional legislators. Uh, they, they've got more assembly people in the Constitution we got people who want to stand up for what is right. That's why they're getting into office. We've got Dirty Harry Reid, we call him, out here. We're, we're trying to get him out. People are sick and tired of lies, the deceit, and just the, the uh, leaving no stone unturned, we, we call it. Um, basically, do whatever you have to do to further your own agenda. And that's exactly what um, Harry Reid and, and other lawmakers have done. Um, and as, as I'm sure you know, and I'm, as I'm sure we've talked about in the past, or you and I have talked about this a lot, how he's got his hand in this, and there is proof out there. There's an investigation into this whole thing. Yes. Yeah, and, and a lot of people tend to overlook that. But, um, yeah, Harry Reid has his hands all in this. Um, and it's, it's sad. It's really sad. Um, just like with... Uh, Gordon, him standing up against the corruption that's in the LVMPD. Um, Gordon, as well as as Shane, who we have on here right now, signed the uh, CSPOA resolution. And it seems as if the federal government tends to be scared of that. But, you know, a lot of people don't seem to realize, and I think I really want them to realize, and they can look this up, the federal government, this is literally a corporation fighting a country. Um, the corporation uh, is, you have the United States, quote unquote, the United States, which is completely different than the United States of America. The United States, if you look in U.S. Code, Title 28, 3002, Section 15, A, B, and C, it'll let you know, quote unquote, United States, is actually a corporation. The United States of America is our country. Therefore, it is really literally a corporation fighting against the country. And you know, Brian Sandoval, whom is governor over Nevada right now, it's 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 kind of amazing that the only thing he would do is say, oh, well, I'm against the First Amendment thing, but he didn't step in to protect his citizens. Well, you know, he's in this neck deep as well. He doesn't really truly stand for the people because if he stood for the people, he'd have called the dogs off in the first place. That's my opinion. What do y'all think? Well, I can tell you that Brian Sandoval does not have a lot of love, especially if where I'm at in Nevada, which is near Carson City, near the Capitol. Um, very few people like him. A lot of people see through that that um, those veneers on his teeth. You know what I mean? Correct. Um, a lot of people see through him because. Um, for instance, one really good example of this, a while back, I cannot remember the exact bill, but there was a um, universal background check presented, um, and he was going to, he, he said publicly that he would never sign it, and um, that he would veto it on the spot. Well, he decided that he, he wasn't going to do that, he said, well, I'm repealing that statement, now 